All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome back to some more Oscar coverage. It's finally time for you to listen to me talk about this more after you've had to sit through rounds and rounds of reviews that you don't care about uh, that I keep making. We're finally back to talk about what you really subscribe for. Um, the reason I'm deciding to make this video now, um, still late September, is we've just wrapped up on a lot of big film festivals. You had uh, Telluride, you had Venice, you had Toronto, and I, I wouldn't necessarily say that like the winners of those three film festivals, like that's a big precursor for what's gonna win Oscars. I more so was looking at that as, okay, these are the first reactions we're getting out of critics for these movies, and having seen these reviews and critics have actually seen these movies, it can help in terms of what's really gonna be good, what's gonna be a player, what's not gonna be a player. Um, I'm going to be talking about some movies I did not talk about in the last video, and I will be retouching on some of those movies I talked about in the last video simply because there have been new developments. I would either think some of them have gained um, more substance in terms of, of possibility, or some films have, have received less, and I'm kind of going to get into those. Uh, but I'm also going to talk about some new movies that I haven't talked about yet, so uh, let's get into some of those. So, the one that I actually got a fair amount of comments about in the last video was Call Me By Your Name, which is uh, getting a ton of buzz in regards to the Oscars. And I didn't talk about it in the last video because I didn't know much about it, and I'm purposefully sort of trying to stay away from trailers and stuff like that. I'm finding that I'm enjoying and, and respecting movies more, not seeing any material or footage going into them. So I've stayed away from the trailers, but just from sort of reading the plot line of this movie and, and just sort of overall looking at the talent behind it, the cast, the director, the writing, and not only that, but the reviews, which are out of this world phenomenal for this movie. It's looking to be a very strong contender, and the one thing that continuously is catching my eye about this movie, you know, the plot of it, the look of it, the feel that it seems like it's trying to convey, and the overall message of it, it's a very Oscar kind of movie. Now, a lot of people think that's a bad thing. People think that that means, oh, the movie's too artsy-fartsy, it's, it's too pretentious. I don't necessarily think that's the case. There are some of those movies. Those are called Oscar bait movies, which are movies simply made so that they can be nominated for Oscars. That's not always the case. An Oscar movie is a movie that the Academy jumps on top of because they just like the idea of it. And you can usually tell when those movies are coming out what they're going to be. You know, Birdman was a very Oscar movie, stuff like that. Uh, and the one that I kind of been, I've been comparing this to is Manchester by the Sea. It's sort of seeming like that kind of vibe in terms of, of how the Oscars are going to accept this. And, um... Again, that's not to say that this is a bad thing. Manchester by the Sea is a great movie. One of my favorite movies of 2016. It's weird calling that movie a favorite, by the way, considering how depressing it is. Like, it's one of the best, but saying it's a favorite, never mind. Um, but this movie is sort of giving me a very similar vibe to that. Um, as to where I think it's it's got a lot of strong contention to take, first of all, a ton of nominations. I think we're going to see this movie everywhere. I think you can probably bet to see it in Best Picture. There's a good bet you'll see it in Best Director, probably some uh, <clears throat> performance categories. Maybe, just, just maybe, Army Hammer might get that nomination. We've all kind of been gunning for him to get. Like, we all, deep in our hearts, know that Army Hammer's a talented guy. He just sometimes gets caught in shit. You know, like, we all want him to succeed. And I think this movie could be the first time we'll actually see him maybe get a worthy nomination out of it. Michael Stahlberg, there's talks about him getting nominated. I think this is definitely one to look out for. And it looks, I mean, I shouldn't say it looks great because I haven't seen the trailer for it. But the reviews are impeccable and I, I can't wait to see it. And I think most people really can't wait to see this movie. I wish I'd seen it, you know, at like a press screening. But, you know, I, I, I they don't give me those. So, I don't know. Take it up with them, I guess. I'll take it up with them. Uh, one that I, I didn't talk about in my last video because it was almost weird for me to think about this movie being nominated until I've seen some of the stuff for it is The Shape of Water. Fun fact, either this was a mistake or this was intentional. I saw the triple feature of War for the Planet of the Apes. They played all three Planet of the Apes movies. And they showed the trailer for The Shape of Water a week before it dropped, like, worldwide. So I don't know if that was kind of a, oh, the people that see this are going to see the trailer, or if that was just a, a fuck-up on the theater's part. But I got to see the trailer before everyone else, so I don't know. But 
Um, it was weird almost for me to acknowledge that this movie could be nominated. Guillermo del Toro is a great director. Um, I won't say he has a perfect record. He's got things like Crimson Peak and Pacific Rim that I'm not a big fan of, but then he's got the Hellboy movies and he's got uh, Pan's Labyrinth, which is heavily regarded as one of the best movies of the 21st century. So um, it, it's, it was almost weird, though, just seeing the trailer for this movie to be like, I think that could be an Oscar movie until I saw everything about this movie in terms of reviews and accolades. Uh, for one, it did win the Golden Lion at the Venice Film Festival, which people have said is not a great precursor. I, they, I think it was Brokeback Mountain was the last movie that won that that was nominated for Best Picture, but it's certainly seeming like this movie is going to be an exception to that current streak. Um, just like I, I, Guillermo del Toro, if you want to place a bet on anything for that movie, will m almost positively be in the Best Director category. I think we'll definitely see a nomination for him because he's a very visual, stylistic director. That's just sort of what he does, and this movie looks like it's going to give him a shot to sort of boast that onto the screen, not only for the Academy viewers, but for widespread audiences. I think this movie is going to get a lot of talk and a lot of attention um, in terms of just sort of a widespread audience. And um, I think what could be really cool is seeing it in the technical categories and up against some of the movies that are going to be nominated for stuff like that this year. We're going to see a lot of interesting competition in the technical categories, things like visual effects and cinematography and production design. Um, makeup and hairstyle. I think that's this year is going to be a very interesting year in terms of that fight. You've got movies like Dunkirk, and then you've got the new Star Wars, and you've got all these crazy movies coming out. Blade Runner 2049. So um, I think this is definitely one to look at because it's sort of going to be pretty spread out in nominations, more than likely. It could probably pop up in Best Picture. People are talking a ton about Sally Hawkins. People are loving Sally Hawkins in this movie, so it's it's a possibility she could be nominated for this. Um, any other performance I don't I don't really see happening. I think Michael Stahlberg is already getting his nomination for Call Me By Your Name, so like I don't think he would pop up. I think that's him in this movie, right? I'm not crazy. He's in this movie. I'm pretty sure he's in this movie. But yeah, Shape of Water is definitely one to look forward to. Uh, similarly, Call Me By Your Name, I, I have seen the trailer for this one. It looks great. I think it's definitely one to check out, and I think it's going to be pretty spread out over the, the nominations list in terms of this year's Oscars. Um, one I briefly want to mention and not talk about a crazy ton is is downsizing. Um, this was one that people had everywhere on their lists a while back and I never really did when I was writing. I mean I had it in like possibilities but I never really was like oh man this thing is, is it's really gonna be there and the reviews sort of support that. The reviews are good. Don't get me wrong, they're good reviews, but they're not excellent reviews. They're not good enough reviews to the point where I can sit here and go, it looks like this thing is going to carry momentum from now until the Oscars. By the way, I think momentum is the right word. I'm almost positive, I don't know. So if I'm using the wrong word, I hope you understand what I mean. Um, It just, it doesn't seem like it's got that lift to it and maybe upon wide release that'll change but even some of like the better reviews I've seen have been kind of it's almost a little too much but it recovers and that's fine that's good but I don't think that this movie is really gonna have the impact that it needs to to get nominated for a ton of Oscars that's not to say it won't be nominated for any but I think the plot and the the way the movie's shaping out to look is sort of going to be strange for Academy voters because you look at Alexander Payne's roster and it's it's similar to this but this is like another step for him you know Nebraska is like a darker comedy but he has also done things like The Descendants and Sideways which have comedic elements to them but this is a step above this above those movies so I think it could kind of kick itself in the shins and be too much. I think we're going to have to wait and see for a wide release on this one. I'd like to see the kind of attention that it gets upon everybody being able to see this movie and, and a ton of critics being able to see this movie and how its its score is going to be bumped up. I don't use Rotten Tomatoes very much. I don't find that to be very much of an accurate representation. I more so use Metascore, um, in case you're interested. But, I, I don't know. That's sort of the way I see that one going. I It's just... Where it is right now, in its current spot, I don't see it being everywhere as much as a lot of people do. <clears throat> the other one I want to talk about that uh, I also feel has lost a lot of steam is Battle of the Sexes. I talked very highly about this movie in my last video, and the reviews are okay. They're not bad, 
but they're not great. They're, like, they're fine. There are people who are saying, yeah, this movie's good. And this is probably going to be the first, like, Oscar season movie I see. I don't really, like, D Dunkirk and Detroit were summer movies, whether or not they end up playing into the Oscars or not. Probably my first, like, real award season movie is going to be this one, other than Mother. And I'm probably going to see it this weekend. But the reviews just aren't that great. People are saying the performances are good, but if the movie's not holding itself up well enough, then people are just going to forget about it. People are going to be like, oh yeah, uh, Emma Stone was good in that, but, you know, that movie's a thing of the past. We all forgot about it. All these great movies are coming out now. They're better. They've got more steam, and we're going to nominate those, and that movie's going to be left in the dust. And I feel like that's definitely a possibility. Also, I said in my last video that this movie was coming out in a good release date. I thought it came out in October, and I was wrong. It has a November or a September release date, and I hate September release dates for the Oscars. They never work. They're always. I said this in my last video. September is the month where the movies that are trying to be nominated but never get nominated come out. And I'm sure someone's gonna throw me a statistic or a movie that proves me completely wrong on that. But as far as I can remember, like movies that come out in September never really show up. You got Black Mass, which originally everyone was like, "Oh, Johnny Depp is totally gonna get nominated for that." Nope. So. I don't know, I always just kind of see September as being sort of the dumping month for the movies that are trying to get nominated but won't, and the reviews for Battle of the Sexes are sort of helping my point on that. It's it's lost a ton of steam, and I think it's going to be really, really hard for this to recover, especially considering the release date, wide release date, is this week, and it has to keep that, that momentum going until, what, January? I think that's going to be pretty tough. So my camera just turned off. That was cool. I'm glad I heard the click. Um, if that happens again, I'm going to get my other camera. You think I give a fuck? Um, but the people are saying this is a career high for Gary Oldman and that this could be easily his best performance, which considering the acting talent and range of Gary Oldman is a very bold statement. And if it's that true, I think it's a fair bet he's going to win this year. He could almost be a shoe in at the number one spot. And what I'll keep saying is this, and I've been saying it for a little bit now, every single day that we don't know the title for this Paul Thomas Anderson movie, every day that we still know jack shit about this movie, Gary Oldman's chances continue to increase and increase and increase. We know nothing about this movie. We know absolutely diddly shit. And the, the build-up for the release of Darkest Hour continues to get stronger. And the, the build-up for the release of that movie continues to get weaker because people are forgetting about it. It's, it's falling back into the sidelines. People keep having to be reminded, oh yeah, there's a Paul Thomas Anderson movie coming out. But then when you look at Darkest Hour, people are like, holy shit, have you heard about Darkest Hour? Gary Oldman's apparently phenomenal in it. It's a, he's probably going to win the Oscar. So when the movie releases and hits, it's going to help even more to have that momentum if there's been this huge build-up to the movie. Now, if, like, this Paul Thomas Anderson movie has a crazy phenomenal trailer and, you know, this this huge drop in terms of marketing, okay, maybe we'll start to see some craziness for, for that movie and Daniel Day-Lewis will start to rise up the ranks again. But right now, I could make you a pretty strong prediction that Gary Oldman is looking to be your frontrunner for Best Actor this year. I keep checking the camera now because I'm super paranoid. The other one that I, I, I'm briefly going to mention, I'm not, not going to talk too much about this one, is Molly's Game. Uh, I talked a lot about Molly's Game in the last video. Um, it did air, or air, like it's a fucking TV show. It did screen at TIFF and was met to positive reviews. People are liking this movie. Um, and again, like any Sorkin movie, it's going to be mixed, I think, when it releases to the public. But the, the one who was really getting a lot of talk was Jessica Chastain. And... I think it's too early to be saying she's got a fair shot. I, I do think that's a movie we have to wait until it releases, uh, until it wide releases. Because some of these movies I've talked about screened at Venice and Telluride and TIFF. This one only screened at TIFF. So I think we have to wait for this one to screen uh, wide release in, in order to really make any strong predictions about this one. I'd personally like to see this movie before I make any strong predictions about this one. I wish I heard more about Idris Elba. I didn't hear very much about him, and that makes me worry about his chances of being nominated. I heard a lot more about Jessica Chastain, and I think her chances are still relatively high. But I do want to wait for a, uh, a wide release on this movie to see if, if 
you know, it's getting great reviews just because so little of amount of critics have seen it, or if it's if it's really that good. And I think when that release hits, then you're gonna really start to see this movie build, and you could see a lot of nomination talk start up for this movie. But I don't really think that's happened or will be coming soon. I think that's gonna happen towards November when it releases. Oh yeah, let's talk about Mother, cause I saw that. Uh, <laughs> whoa, ooh, boy, is it something? Uh, it's a, it's something. Um, it's a movie that. It's almost too brutal for its own good. I don't see the Academy voting for this movie. It's a great movie. Don't get me wrong. I thought it was excellent. But, uh, uh hmm. If you've seen it, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's pretty brutal. Not the whole way through. When you hit, like, the hour mark, it starts going balls to the wall. But he... Aronofsky made something that almost seems like it's impossible for this group of Academy voters. And I know the, the big, like, stereotype is it's a group of old white people. And if, you know, whether that's 100% true is up for debate or not. But there's no doubt that a fair portion of the Academy is old white people. And, boy, seeing a group of old white people watch this movie would be really an experience, I think. To, I think it'd be more... I don't want to say more interesting than watching the movie. I think it could be funnier than watching the movie. But, I don't know. If anything, it's almost like a Nocturnal Animal situation where maybe you would see a performance nomination pop up. But I don't even see that happening. People are talking about Michelle Pfeiffer. She's not in very much of this movie. Um, but fuck me, I don't know. In terms of the supporting actress category, the Oscars like to go for performances that are not in very much of the movie at all. You know? You've got Lupita Nyong'o in 12 Years a Slave, and Hathaway in Les Mis. Who won last year? Who beat Michelle Williams? What the fuck? Viola Davis. Oh, well, that's not fair. She's, she was leading actress. She should have been known. Whatever. But, um... What movie was I talking about? Oh, yeah, Mother. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't see it happening. People, people are asking me in the last video because I didn't talk about it. They were like, well, what do you think about Mother? I, I don't, I wouldn't get my hopes up. Hey, see the movie and you'll know what I'm talking about. You gotta see the movie and go, yeah, it's really great, but is the Academy gonna vote on it? You, you don't think about should be, think about will be. That's the, that's the primary difference in terms of this movie. Should it be nominated? Yeah, probably. It should show up in a couple categories. Will it? Probably not. Probably not. The last movie I want to talk about, I want to talk about briefly, is The Florida Project. Uh, the movie itself, I think, is a little too lowbrow to get um, the recognition it deserves, and obviously, you know, there have been exceptions to that in the past, and there very well could be an exception to that now. But, um, the, the one that, similarly to Gary Oldman, who is saying, who people are saying has a career high uh, performance is Willem Dafoe. He is the front runner on a lot of people's list to win supporting actor. Personally, I'd very much like to see this movie before I make a prediction as bold as that. I think just because I, I, it doesn't have like crazy marketing. It's an A24 movie, so it's pretty low key. Um, I'd like to see it, and I think you know once it really gets out there, um, he'll get the the talk that he probably deserves more widespread. I guess I've said that word a lot, but you know, I think when people see that movie. Uh, it'll it'll help. I just don't have that much to say about it. I, I wanted to mention it, though, because I've seen nothing but amazing things about the movie, especially about him. So I think it's a good bet. I hope he nominated. So, that's going to wrap it up for me. Expect uh, an, probably one more of these before I start kind of like trying to genuinely put together a list of nominations or, you know, do something else crazy with the Oscar stuff. Again, when I do one, when I say I'm only going to do one more video of this, I mean early Oscar predictions, and then I'm going to continue to do award season coverage, but it'll probably be a little bit different in terms of format than this. Um, but... Let me know if you think I missed a movie or missed a point or something in the comments or if you agree with something, you disagree with something I said. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I love hearing thoughts in the comments. Um, please let me know. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and continuing to support. Um, the channel has been growing very well, which is ballsy for someone with 171 subscribers to say, but um, it's it's grown strongly for a 
kid who makes reviews sitting in a chair in his basement while everyone walks around upstairs and you can hear it on the microphone. So I appreciate all the support. Thank you guys so much. Uh, it's a blast making these videos. And if you enjoyed this video and want to stick around and haven't subscribed yet and want to see more of these videos, please feel free to subscribe. Leave a like on the video. I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, at IceColdFilm. That's right, Films was taken. I, like, just my fucking luck, right? Just my luck. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.